All right, Brandon, you got this. You can do it. Come on, God is in you. God wants to speak through you. Come on, you've been studying all week to, to share this word. Oh, but I feel so insecure right now. I feel like they're just watching me. What if it's not good? What if they don't like it? What if they don't like my outfit? What if they don't receive? Come on, but God is in me. I know this is a word God gave me. But what if I don't deliver it right? What if, what if I mess it up? Come on. All right, three, two, one. Put a big smile on. Come on, you got this. Hey, good morning, God's house. Wait, did you guys, did you guys hear that? Were you guys listening to me? Did I, did I say the quiet part out loud? Uh-oh. I didn't, I didn't mean to let you in on my thought life. I didn't, I didn't mean to let you in on the battle sometimes that goes on in my mind. I didn't mean to let you in on the fear that sometimes runs through my mind. I didn't mean to let you in on, you know, the, the, the fight in my mind sometimes before I step up on the stage that, that God has called me to do this, but sometimes it's so fearful and I feel like I'm I'm not worthy of it. I didn't mean to let you in on that conversation. So can I just apologize to you in advance? Because I didn't mean for you to hear that. Is that okay? <laughs> See, because sometimes what I've, what I've learned is that we all have these battles that go on in our mind. You ever been there before? That sometimes we battle between faith. Man, I got faith to do this thing that God is calling me to do. But then one second later, I got so much fear because what if I fail? What if I'm not good enough? What if I, I let people down? What if I look stupid? And there's this battle that goes on in your mind. Sometimes you can, you can be so confident and want to trust God and, and know that God is for me and he's not against me, but in the same sentence, in the same breath, want to be in control of everything. There's this battle that wages war in our minds sometimes. Sometimes we can be so confident in our calling, but I know God has called me to this, but in the next very moment, we can be crippled and paralyzed to even move forward. See, what I've learned is that most of life's battles are won or lost in our mind. But we got good news. Come on, we got good news. We got God's word, and God's word is powerful. And it's not just help, but God's word will transform and renew our mind to be more like him. See, when you become a follower of Jesus, he begins to renew your mind over time. Someone say over time. <laughs> Come on, look at your neighbor, tap him on the shoulder and say, give me time. Give me time. Give me time. I'm trying to renew my mind over time. I ain't there yet. It's over time. I'm going to renew my mind. See, I want us to look a little bit today at the life of the apostle Paul. Because, you know, he was a man of, of great faith. He wrote most of the New Testament Bible. But see, before he had a radical encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, where Jesus interrupted his whole life and blinded him and changed the course of his life to build the church. Before that, he was a, he was a Pharisee. He was a teacher of the law. He would crucify and go after Christians. And we see this progressive journey of his life, uh, uh, um, him, him being grown into the man that God had wanted him to be and ultimately into the man that he was, but there was always battles going on in his mind. I'm reminded of scripture in Romans chapter seven, where, where the apostle Paul, he's talking, he says, listen, I know I'm a man of great faith and I, I know I'm building all these churches and I'm an overseer and I'm an apostle, but, but sometimes I do the things that I don't want to do. And then I don't do the things that I want to do. You ever been there before? Like, man, I don't want to do this sin, and I know it here, but yet I keep doing it anyways. And then the things I don't want to do, I end up doing. See, that was a battle in the Apostle Paul's mind. But we see his life progressing. He, he begins to overcome these battles. Romans 7, 14 says, I do not understand what I do. It's the Apostle Paul. For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate to do, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, then I agree that the law is good. See, he sounds kind of crazy, right? And see, as we, as we watch his life progress and we see him fully step into his purpose, we see him waging war with the battle in his mind. 
because there's a lie of the enemy that wants to attack your mind. 2 Corinthians 10.3 says this, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the, wor- as the world does. The weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power. That power in the Greek is the word dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite from. It means explosive, miraculous power of God. On the contrary, they have divine power to what? To demolish strongholds. See, we have power within us. The same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the, from the dead is living on the inside of us. And we have that power to demolish these strongholds, these battles that go on in our mind. See, stronghold is a military term. A stronghold was a, was a wall that they would build sometimes 20, 30 feet deep to make sure it was sturdy. And, and who knows how, why? See, they were trying to protect what was on the inside. So they would build up these strongholds, these massive walls to keep the enemy out. And what, is this, what does our spiritual enemy do? What does the devil do? He builds up strongholds in our mind. And he tries to shape the way you think one small thought at a time. Tries to take you away from the truth of God's word and tries to replace it with his lie. And then what happens over time because you've bought into the lie for so long, you now believe the lie is the truth, but it's a trap. And so you got to replace the trap with the truth. Because if you don't, you become a prisoner of lies. And you start saying things like, I just can't trust anyone. I'll I'll never be good enough. I'll never succeed. I'll always be broke. I'll, I'll never have a good marriage. God doesn't hear my prayer, so why even pray? He doesn't really even care. No one really cares about me. I'll never make a difference. I'll never amount to anything. So how do we... How do we battle this, these thoughts in our mind? Well, 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. So when these thoughts, these lies of the enemy come into our mind, we got to take them captive and we got to make those thoughts obedient to Christ. I want to preach today from this title, if you're taking notes, retrain your brain. Retrain your brain. Tell your neighbor, you need to retrain your brain. Thank you, brother. Today, we are in part three of this series that we've been entitled, Happy, Healthy, and Holy. Losing the world and gaining our soul. I don't know how this is still playing. That must be the Holy Ghost, but (laughs) it sounds good. And we've been working from from this premise about getting our soul right, right? If we want a happy, healthy, and holy life, man, we gotta get our soul right. Why? So we can accomplish everything that God has for us, so we can step into his purpose. What's his purpose for us? Matthew 22, that we would love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we would love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But we cannot love our neighbor unless we love ourselves. And so we've been working with this premise that, man, we got to get us right first. I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. Come on, anyone want to be healthy? I want to be holy. I want to be set apart and used for God. And so we've just been laying this foundation. Last week, if you weren't here, I highly encourage you, go back and watch the message or watch it maybe for the first time. We talked about this second layer of our soul, which is our heart, not the organ in our chest that's pumping blood through our body, but our, our heart, the, the one that Proverbs says, we got to guard our heart for out of it comes the wellspring of life. Everything that comes out of our life is coming from our heart. So we got to protect this, this heart. But how I many you know we got a sinful heart? We got a heart of stone, but God promises us that he'll replace our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh, a tender heart, to love people, to have compassion. And so last week, we went all the way back to the beginning for God's design for us. How did God create us to be in relationship with him? Naked and no shame, right? Perfect relationship with our our partner, with our spouse, perfect relationship, perfect intimacy, 
nothing holding us back in the same relationship with God. That's how we're designed to be, but we had to get a renewed heart. We got to understand that we're all sinners in need of a savior. We got to understand that we're all doomed without a renovated heart. Our soul is lost. Our soul is damaged without Jesus. So last week, we, we built on that premise talking about our heart, but today I want to talk about our mind, this, this other layer of our soul. Our, our mind is our thinking. See, all change begins in your mind first. If you want to change this year, if you want to change in 2024, we have to go head first. If you want to change your living, it starts by changing your thinking. And so if you don't like your situation right now, if you don't like your your circumstance right now, then you have to change your thoughts. Why? Because your thoughts then turn into your feelings and your feelings then turn into the way you live, your actions. Write this down. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. See, a lot of the problems that we have are related to wrong thought processes. Science would prove this, that A lot of the relational challenges that we have, eating disorders, addictions, anxiety, are a direct result of toxic thinking. The Bible would say it like this, Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. See, the life that we have is a reflection of the thoughts that we think. And what we think about determines who we become. And so here's just some examples. If you think that you can't, you probably won't. If you think that you can, you most likely will. If you dwell on your problems all day, they'll probably overwhelm you. But if you look for solutions in life, you'll probably find some. If you often feel like a, like a victim, you'll probably become a victim. But if you believe then you can overcome because Christ is in you, then guess what? You'll begin to overcome because Christ is in you. What we think about determines who we become. Paul says it like this, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you. He's like, I I just urge you. You need to get this. Brothers and sisters, that's you. In view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, his pleasing, his perfect will. See, transformation is a result of renewing your mind. Your life doesn't just change by changing your life. Your life changes by changing your thinking. I don't just get happy, healthy, holy because I say I want to get happy, healthy, and holy. i got to change the way I think. And the foundation of transformation is rooted, listen to me, in surrendering ourselves to God's mercy. Recognizing the depth of his mercy that it will always lead us to willingly offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. And so it starts with having a proper understanding of God's mercy towards us. Because you don't sacrifice to get God's mercy. You sacrifice in view of God's mercy. There's a difference. See, I'm thankful for the grace and the mercy of God. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the grace and the mercy of God in my life. See, grace is, let me give you the definition, the unmerited favor of God. God gives you what you do not deserve. Salvation, right? By grace, we are saved through faith. It's a gift from God. You don't deserve it. You can't earn it. That is the grace of God. But mercy, the mercy of God, is God not giving you what you do deserve. There's a big difference. I deserve some bad things. You deserve some bad things. You've sowed some seeds of bad things in your life, but thank God you have not reaped every bad thing that you've sowed. That's called the mercy of God. Of God. He has not given you your punishment that you deserve. That's the mercy of God. So, in view of God's mercy, in view of God not giving me everything I do deserve, what do I do? I offer my body, my mind as a living sacrifice to Him, holy and pleasing to God. 
And I love that it says, that is your true and proper worship. See, we oftentimes think that worship is the three songs before the sermon. We think that worship is the playlist on your phone. But, and that is a way to worship, but God is not just looking for a clap offering. God is looking for your life as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to him. Don't get it twisted. God wants your whole life, not just your two and your four. Or for some of you white folks, the one and the three. Just kidding. You guys are doing great. I've been watching. (laughs) But he wants your whole life to be devoted to him. Every single part of it. And then it says something I love. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. How many of you know this world has patterns? And if you're not careful, you will just, without even knowing it, conform to the patterns of this world. But there is a way that God wants you to live. And then there's a default way that the world wants you to live. But Paul is urging us, don't conform to the patterns of this world. You should look different, think different, act different, walk different than the world does. There's a pattern of work that looks different than the world. There's a pattern of rest that looks different than the world. There's a pattern of friendship that looks different from the world. There's a pattern of sex that looks different from the world. There's a pattern of celebration that looks different from the world. Don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, the life that you have is a direct result, direct reflection of the thoughts that you think. Have you ever thought about what you think about? Because if you think about what you thought about, you'd probably realize that your thoughts are really stupid. (laughs) Every year I have to go through, in my business, I have to go through an audit. It's the worst thing ever. It's, it's, It's terrible. It's eight hours of misery. You just have to sit with this insurance auditor and open up all your financials, open up all your books, and they audit every single line item to make sure that they're not overpaying or underpaying your insurance. It's terrible, right? But they do it to to limit their exposure. And I sit there for eight hours and have to go through line by line by line, but they do it because they're smart. They audit every single little thing to make sure that their business is in order and no other businesses are, are taking advantage of insurance companies. And so they audit every little thing to find out, hey, are we off somewhere? See, maybe for us, we should do a thought audit. Where did that thought come from? Why did I get angry right there? Why did I think that lustful thought? What happened? Why did I I think that jealous thought? Why did that make me happy? Why did that make me sad? Why did that make me glad? Come on, Dr. Seuss. Like... (laughs) Like, we got to audit our thoughts sometimes. Because if you don't think about what you think about, then you'll end up conforming to the patterns of this world because you're not giving an, a thought to your thoughts. How did I feel when I walked through the door? Why did I get angry? Why did I, like, think about what you think about? Are my thoughts geared towards being worried? Are my thoughts geared towards Man, what do people think about me? Are my thoughts geared towards, man, uh, I'm just worried about my kid's future. I'm worried about money. I'm worried about my job. I'm worried about my health. Or are my thoughts more geared towards peace? Are my thoughts geared towards God's promises? Are are my thoughts geared towards what God can do in and through me? Are Are my thoughts geared towards trusting God? Do my thoughts lean more negative? Are my thoughts always critical of people? Are my thoughts always finding fault in everything? Are my thoughts always discontent? Are my thoughts always hard and harsh? Are my thoughts always busy? Or are my thoughts positive? Do I believe the best in people? Am I optimistic about the future? Am I saying life is good? Do I have a positive outlook on things? Why or why not? You got to audit your thought. Do my thoughts lean more towards uh, uh, the, the things I can get in this life? Am I consumed by material possessions? Or am I consumed by worldly things? Am I consumed by trying to be liked by people or is my thoughts more consumed with eternal things? Am I trying to reach people? Am I trying to step into my purpose? Am I trying to step into my calling? Where are your thoughts leading you? Because what comes into your mind comes out of your life. No matter what you do, no matter what you have, no matter who you know, 
No matter what you buy, no matter where you live, no matter where you travel, your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thought. Are you excited about the direction your thoughts are taking you? I'm trying to get my mind happy, healthy, and holy this year. So I need to audit my thoughts. And so how do we do that? I'm so glad you asked. Number one, if you're taking notes, this is going to be a short, quick message. It's straight to the point. You ready? Number one, we got to identify the biggest stronghold. Remember, we talked about these big strongholds, these walls. Identify the biggest stronghold holding you back. Just one. Let's start with one. Identify the, the biggest stronghold, the biggest lie that the enemy has convinced you that is, it is the truth. What is it? Is it that you're not good enough? Is it that your, your past is too bad? Is it that you can't trust people? Is it you're always battle with your weight or always battle with your health? Is, is it that you, you'll never be good with money? You'll, you'll never have a job that satisfies? You'll never find purpose? Is it that you cannot get close to God? You're not good with people? Is it that all your relationships suck? What is the biggest stronghold holding you back? What is the lie that you've bought as the truth? We got to retrain our brain. Your negative thoughts are changing the chemical makeup of your mind. Every thought creates what's called a neurochemical change in our body. Okay? So every time you think a thought, it then becomes easier again and again to think that thought. And so if you think it once, it's easier to think it again. But the same is true for the positive. Every time you think a positive thought, it's, it's easier to think that thought again. And there's something that when we think positive thoughts, you get these what are called dopamine hits. And they can become addicted some, addictive sometimes. When, when you like the feeling of something, you get a dopamine hit. It's why some of you are addicted to Instagram. It's because you get a dopamine hit. Every time someone likes, every time someone comments, you're like, refresh, refresh. Ooh, I like that. It's because your, your brain, these neurotransmitters are going off in your mind and it's easier and easier to do it. They become deeper and deeper and deeper strongholds, either in a good way or a bad way. The more often you think a thought, the easier then it becomes. So if you believe a lie for long enough, then you begin to live the life as if it were true. A couple years ago, um, I bought my kids dirt bikes for Christmas. And I was like, well, they got dirt bikes. Dad needs a dirt bike. Naturally. Um, I don't ride dirt bikes, but I was like, I want one. And so we would take our boys out to the desert. All three of us don't know what we're doing. So dad's trying to teach the boys to ride a dirt bike. And dad don't know how to ride a dirt bike, but we're going to figure this thing out. And I remember going out there and there was all these just tracks and, and things that were already kind of built out from other people going out there. And so I'm, I'm leaving my boys on the little easy part. And I'm like, dad's going to go out to the dad track by myself. And thank God there was no one else around. But I was, you should have seen your boy out there, you know? I was like, mm, super slow. Like you're supposed to be jumping. I was just like. But what I realized is that when on these built out tracks, if you've ever ridden a dirt bike or been in the dirt, there's these things called a berm, right? It's, it's the turn on a track. And if you don't go fast enough in the berm, you fall over. And so your pastor was out in the middle of the desert, just laid out trying to pick up this 300 pound dirt bike because I wasn't going fast enough in this berm. Right. But what I realized is that you got to get some speed and momentum to go into this to this berm. And then it shoots you out and you continue on the track. And see, that's the same thing with our thoughts. They're like a berm. And you're going through life. And if that berm, if that thought you've been you've, you've had it for so long, it's easier to just keep going through that track. So you have these negative berms, these negative strongholds, these negative thoughts in our mind, and it just becomes so easy to go through them. It becomes so easy to ride through them that you don't even think about it anymore. It just becomes your natural default berm that you just ride through life in. And so what do you do? You have to capture that thought. You have to, cap you have, you have to identify it. Man, that berm, that thought, that stronghold is there. I got to capture that thought. And then I got to create a new pathway, 
I got to create a new way of thinking. I got to tear down that old berm that I don't like that's leading me towards death. And I got to build up a new one that's going to lead me towards life. But I got to identify what is the thing that's holding me back? What is the lie in my mind that I believe for so long? What is it? You got to capture it and create a new berm. And so what, is it, what does it look like for us? Maybe you had a frustrating day. Anyone ever had one of those at work? And then you already know it was a hard day. And so this is, this is how easy it is to just be caught in a, in, a, in a negative cycle. You had a frustrating day. You pull up in the driveway. You already know the house is going to be crazy. You already know the kids are going to be wild. You already know it's going to be loud. And so you walk into the door ready to yell, ready to battle, ready to fight. And it just becomes this, and the more you do it, the easier it is to just go through it. And so that's maybe a stronghold in your life. You got to capture that thought and replace it with the truth. Replace it with how it should be. And so if you could identify, you go, okay, I had a frustrating day at work. I know that. I know that's a stronghold. I know what I want to do. I know what my default is. Instead, I'm going to pause. I'm going to wait in my car and I'm going to pray. God, give me peace. God, when I step through these doors, God, allow me to be 100% present with my kids, 100% present with my wife. God, allow, give, me, give me grace, God, and allow me to extend grace to the family. They don't know what I went through at work, but God, let me not take that out on them. And you do this every day, and guess what you're doing? You're identifying the old stronghold and replacing it with the new God thought. You got to identify the stronghold that, the, that you've bought into. Or maybe, maybe you can't relate to that one. Maybe you get frustrated as a mom and you're just, the kids are just running around like crazy. And it was a hard day and, and life is just chaotic and you just want to get out of the house. And so you know as soon as dad comes home, you just, yeah, you throw, you throw everything at him and then you go isolate. Or maybe for you, you feel real bad about yourself. So you get up and you just head towards the freezer to grab the ice cream because the ice cream always makes you feel better, but then you complain about your weight and how you're sluggish all the time. And so when you know those thoughts are coming, retrain your brain instead of making to the freezer, go to the front door and walk around the neighborhood. And if you do it long enough, come on, you can replace the trap with the truth. You can retrain your brain to step into the life that God has for you. Or maybe for you, I know you could identify with this one, you're bored. So what do you do? You scroll because you're just bored because you're getting those little dopamine hits. Woo. But you know, every time you scroll, you get a little jealous because their life looks so amazing. You keep scrolling. Oh, they're on vacation. Oh, they're, they just got that. Oh, wow. And then you, over time, you're like, I'm a loser. I suck. I'm a terrible mom. I have no money. I'm broke. I'm busted. And I look disgusted, right? <laughs> And so if you know that you do that, retrain your brain, capture that stronghold and maybe open up the Bible app. I don't know, but that would be a good thing. But the point is you got to identify the berm, identify the stronghold, capture it, tear it down and replace it with the truth. Because to think in a different way, you got to forge a new path in your brain. And the more you walk the path, then the easier it begins to travel. It's like showing up to church. It's like what Mariah said. Church is a non-negotiable in our house. We'll be like, yeah, you're the pastor, of course. No, 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 no. Way before we were pastoring the church, that was a non-negotiable. And it's just become so normal to us that if we're anywhere else on a Sunday morning, it's like, this is weird. Because we've, we've walked this, this path for so long. And, and you're doing the same thing. You're here right now. So I'm preaching to the choir. That's good. But you're retraining your brain to walk the path that God has for you. Because to think in a different way, you got to forge a new path. And the more you stay off the old path, the harder it is to think that thought again. But you got to identify what is, what's the biggest stronghold holding me back? Just one. Just start with one. Is it, man, I'm not lovable. I'll, I'll never be good enough. I, man, I, don't, I just don't deserve good things. I, I'll always be broke. I, I'm just a part of the have nots, not the haves. Like you got you to gotta capture that thought. I'm helpless, I'm hopeless, I'm, I'm worthless, I'm, I'm pointless. Identify it, name it, because you cannot defeat what you do not define. So what is it for you? Number two, here's the second one and the last one. You gotta name the truth that demolishes that stronghold. 
John 8, 31, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. See, we have to hold to the truth of God, which is the word of God. And the word of God is going to be the thing that sets us free. Someone say amen. amen. See, the lie of the enemy has put us into spiritual bondage, spiritual prison. It has shackled us. And we've been living a life under false pretenses. Some of us are living lives believing the lie is the truth. Let me illustrate this to you. I think I have a video. This is what some of your lives look like. You think you are drowning in the water, but you just got to stand up. (laughs) Play it one more time. See, you, you, you've bought this lie that your life is over. You've bought this lie that you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. And so that lie has become a stronghold in your life. And all you need to do is just stand up. You're in shallow water. <laughs> Replace the lie with the truth. The truth is you're an overcomer. The truth is you're more than enough. The truth is God is working in you. Replace the trap with the truth, I got another one. See, some of you guys believe this lie. <laughs> you, you think this, this lie right here has been holding you back. This lie has you stuck. This lie has you in shackles. This lie has you in chains. See, this horse don't know the truth. This horse don't know he's a stallion. This horse don't know he has one horse power and he can move this little chair. See, you got more than enough. You're, you're, you've bought into the lie. But if you can just name and identify and then replace the lie with the truth, then you just drag that little lie on your, you know what I'm saying? Like you'll just replace it. That's what we have to do. We got to replace the, the trash with the truth. You can clap right there. That's fine. See, we're not living the life that God wants us to live because we've bought into the lie. Think you're drowning. <laughs> you know, a little chair is holding you back. Stand up. Start walking. You're not chained down by a plastic chair. The enemy has no power over your life unless you give it to him. But, but you need to know the truth. He has no power over you. The truth is greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That's the truth. I, I'm just declaring that over your life right now, that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Come on, I want to be free this year. But I got to replace the trap, the trash, with the truth of God's word. How do we do that? 2 Corinthians 10, 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And when you take something captive, man, that means you got to attack it. You got to go after it. With what? The sword of the spirit, the word of God, Right? His word cuts away the enemy. His word cuts away the lie. What's your stronghold? What is the enemy built in your brain that you've bought? Maybe it's your self-image. Maybe it's your relationship. Maybe it's your health. What's the lie that you've bought? Identify it and replace the lie with the truth. For me, I did that kind of opening, and sometimes that's how I feel. Sometimes I'm like, man, I... This thing is getting way bigger than me. God, I don't, I don't know if I'm qualified for this. God, I didn't, I didn't go to Bible school. God, I didn't. I went to business school. God, I didn't, I didn't have this on my radar. God, I didn't. God, am I, am I qualified? Can I even do this, God? And so you, you have these, these battles in your mind. And I'm not good enough. I don't, I don't, know, if I have, I don't know if I'm the right leader. I don't, I don't know if. The, but see, I got to replace that lie with the truth of God. 2 Peter 1, 3 says, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. And so I got to replace that line and go, man, God, you have given me time. You have given me patience. You have given me energy. You have given me wisdom. You have given me people. You have given me resources in my life to accomplish the thing that you've put before me. That's what we got to do in our real life. We shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. If I could have the keys. See, we got these lies. I I can't get it all done. 
You ever been there before? I can't get this all done. <laughs> but the truth is you, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. The lie is I'm not attractive. I don't look like her. I don't look like him. The truth is you're fearfully and wonderfully made. The lie is, man, I'm just miserable. I just always have a, just a, a miserable life, just a depressing life. No, no, the truth is the joy of the Lord is your strength. The lie is, man, I feel all alone. I'm just lonely. I don't have any good friends, no good people around me. No, 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 the truth is my God is always with me and he's never left me. He's never forsaken me. The lie is, man, I'm just a victim. No, no, no. the truth is you're an overcomer. Life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. What comes into your mind comes out of your life. And I've learned that you cannot have a positive life with a negative mind. Capture the lie, replace it with the truth. Don't stay locked in a prison that Jesus holds the keys to set you free. And truth isn't a concept that we learn truth is a person that we can know. His name is Jesus. We shall know the truth and he, Jesus, will set us free. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you have a stronghold in your mind, a lie that you have believed for too long, that the enemy has been working on you and working in you, for some of you it may be years that you've bought into this life, that you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not qualified. You're not worthy. You're not pretty. You're not any of those things. And you've been operating and living life as if those things were true. If that's you in here right now, identify that thing in your mind. Just one. Identify that stronghold. Identify that lie. And right now, if you have something, I want you to just Lift your hands in the air. No one's looking around. Say, I got a stronghold. I got a lie that I've been believing. What you're doing is you're saying, I surrender this to God. I'm giving this lie to you and I'm gonna replace it with your truth, God. The truth is I'm an overcomer. The truth is you died for me to give me new life. The truth is I have have more than enough. The truth is that you're in me, working in me and through me, God. And so God, today, we want to love you with all of us, our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And so God, we don't just worship you with our our claps, but we worship you with our thoughts. God, get get our thoughts right. God, retrain our brain. Holy Spirit, help us identify the strongholds in our life, the traps in our life. And God, give us the wisdom and courage and boldness to step into the new life that you have for us. God, we know that your word is full of truth. God, give us time throughout the week to open up your word, to get around like-minded people that can pour in your truth to my mind and I can start to create these new berms in my life. Ways that lead to life and not death. God, we want to give you all of us. So God, retrain our brain. If you're in here today and you don't know the truth, you don't know that Jesus died for you. You don't know that he traded his life for yours. You don't know that he was hung on a criminal's cross, beaten, whipped, scourged, mocked, shamed, spat on, and died a sinner's death so you can live a savior's life. If you don't know that truth because you've bought in the lie, it's time to replace it. Because that is the truth. That God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He died with you in mind. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame. But for the joy set before him, that was you. 
You were the joy that was set before him. You were the reason he didn't fight back. You were the reason he hung there. You were the reason. Receive that truth this morning. Receive that truth this morning for you, for your family. And I believe right now, eternities, destinies are being changed. That your life was headed in one direction, but because now you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So if that's you in here today, the Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God sent his son to die for us, he's buried in a tomb, and three days later, God raised him from the dead, and we will be saved. So if that's you in here today, I'm going to say a simple prayer. Just repeat it after me. It's just a prayer of confession. And we'll all say it out loud for the sake of those saying this for the first time. Say, dear God, I admit I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that you died for me to give me new life. And so, God, I'm replacing the lie with your truth. Today, I believe in you. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Make me new. Make me whole. In Jesus' name, amen.